let's talk about how to pass AstraZeneca's video interview. What's up guys, it's Mike from Job Ready English here to help you get hired. Today we're gonna to be talking about the pharmaceutical giant AstraZeneca and how you can pass an interview. If you've never watched a pass the interview video before, we split it up into three parts. The first part is we talk about their general recruitment process and what you can expect to go everywhere from application through to job offer. Then we talk about the most common interview questions and finally other questions that came up which we answer in a rapid fire round which we found interesting. All of this information we have gotten from our research from publicly available sources from candidates who have taken this interview and gone through this process over the past six months. If you want more help to pass your AstraZeneca video interview, then check out our AstraZeneca Pass the Interview Pack, which is down in the description below. So let's start off by talking about their recruitment process. Candidates reported that it took about two months. You apply online and have to sit an online test. For the interviews, generally they were split into two interviews. One was a personal interview and the other interview is a technical interview. We don't tend to cover technical interviews in our past the interview videos, so that's something that would be specific to the stream that you are applying. But what you can basically expect from the first round or the kind of screening interview as it were, are just kind of normal behavioral questions like why should we hire you, why this role, and so on and so forth. We're gonna cover some of those questions in the most common questions. And then in the second round, there was uh, technical questions, case studies, and a behavioral interview following the company values were questions around the company values. So AstraZeneca is certainly one of those companies where you wanna know their company values. Uh, and finally, there was a full day's assessment center in Cambridge. So let's talk about the six most common questions that we came across in our research. These are questions that were asked repetitively. So multiple candidates were asked these questions. So therefore we feel that statistically you're more likely to be asked these questions in your interview. Now the timings weren't found in our research for how long you get to answer. So we generally tend to assume for two minutes to answer a question and one minute to think. If this is done over the phone, you'll probably find it might run a little bit longer. If you're writing out a script for your question, we tend to find 100 words a minute tends to be quite helpful. And obviously you wanna shorten those scripts down afterwards. So question number one was, tell us about your previous roles. Now obviously this depends on where you are in your career journey and what you're doing, but this is certainly a place where you'd want to talk about either your research, you'd want to talk about your degree, the things that you've done. It could be that you're applying for drug design, you could be applying for marketing, for sales, but you're going to want to give experience of having already done those things. AstraZeneca for me is certainly one of those companies which I would say is just as difficult to get into as a management consulting firm or the front office and an investment bank. It tends to be highly selective in the people that it takes up. And you really want to think to yourself in the long term, if you're wanting to apply for AstraZeneca, you need to be laying the foundations to be able to answer these questions. When talking about your previous roles, it's really important not just to talk about what you did, but what did you achieve? This is often something that people miss out. So say for example, somebody turned around and said, well, I spent six months working in sales. Very often people won't say how many calls they did, how many sales they made, um, what their targets were, what their bonuses were. When we offer tangibles, if I said to you, well, I've done sales for six months, you'd think, okay, cool. I have my own image of what sales is, but if I say to you, well, I sold one and a half million pounds of real estate in six months, you're like, wow, that's quite impressive. And my target was 750,000 pounds, and I had to make 50 calls a day, five days a week. Giving those tangibles actually makes it very real and allows us to construct an image of what it is that we're saying. Question two, tell me about a time when your values are challenged. Now, if you don't already know your values, I think most people kind of have a shared sense of values or morals. So it might be, you know, excellence, integrity, curiosity, uh, hardworking, ambitious, these types of things. I would say kind of a typical personality type for go for a role at AstraZeneca. Most often I find that my values are challenged around integrity. Integrity tends to come from easy money. So for example, on the YouTube channel, we have been approached numerous times by 
uh, different companies to sponsor different products and to put like little ads that are actually built into our videos and we've never said yes the reason being is whenever we have an inquiry come in we have a strong sense of values as a business that we would only really endorse a product that we love as a team and that we would genuinely use and as of yet nobody's approached us who we kind of thought well yeah this is something that we'd really uh, love to represent um, shout out to Apple if you're watching this video <laughs> or Canon cameras but I think apart from that you know jokes aside that often for me is integrity and also excellence I find that it can be very difficult to maintain a high standard of excellence when I'm very busy. So it's very easy for me to sit down and individually do projects and kind of think, yep, I want this to be an excellent standard. But when I have multiple projects going on at the same time, particularly if other members of the team are waiting for me, I can find it very easy to cut corners. Um, my way around that for integrity is just to think, well, I have a responsibility to my audience and also to myself to not take easy money just to endorse products that really would show us in a bad light. And for excellence, I just tend to work longer hours, if I'm honest. I tend to work longer hours and also I tend to say no more. So one of my favorite sayings comes from Derek Sivers, which is, if it's not hell yes, then it's a no. And I would say 99% of things that I get asked through email, this, that, and the other, which are related to uh, new projects, new business, I tend to say no. Question number three, what are your strengths and weaknesses? Now I would say if you just had two minutes to answer this question, you really need one strength and one weakness. You could possibly get away with two strengths, but a good way to think about how many things can I fit into an X minute answer is you can really only talk about one thing a minute. Now, don't get me wrong, you might be watching this and think, well, I could name 12 strengths in a minute. You could, but unless you said, well, I'm an excellent athlete because I ran track for my county and I won, I placed seventh in the national championships. That is basically a strength plus experience equals proof. If you don't offer that, then you're not really giving a strength, you're just giving an opinion. So you could pick those two strengths. When it comes to weaknesses, now I've often spoke about this in other videos, I like weaknesses that are true. So one of my biggest weaknesses and something that was pointed out to me this morning is because of my level of busyness at times, I can be quite disorganized and I can lack in providing direction. So what I tend to do to rectify that is number one, I always own my mistakes. It's a very important lesson that I've learned as a leader of a team that if I do something wrong and I feel like it's valid, I'll just say, do you know what? I'm wrong. I'm sorry. I take responsibility for that. The second thing that I'll do is I will propose a solution. So um, I was speaking to somebody on the team this morning and she basically said, look, you know, you're, you're not being very clear in your explanation. So I said, look, do you know what? This afternoon, I'm going to set aside some time and really explain what it is that I mean and how it is that you can do that and moving forward this is what I'm going to put in place to make sure that this doesn't happen. Um, what happens with disorganization and generally miscommunication is you can get away with it so many times but after a while people just kind of get upset and they also lose belief, they lose respect for you because they just think you're not really listening to what it is that I'm saying to you. Um, with your weakness, the really important thing to recognize with this is by all means offer the weakness and tell them about you know, where you've had to go through that weakness or where that weakness has been demonstrated to you. But then just like I've done, tell them about what you've learned, a lesson. You know, We all have things that we are working on and that we believe that we can be better at. There's nothing wrong with that. And I think you can really save that and show quite a mature approach and an ability to self-assess and self-correct. Question number four, what are our values? So AstraZeneca has five core values. We follow the science, we put patients first, we play to win, we do the right thing, and we are entrepreneurial. And what I'd say building upon that, obviously that's a very short answer, is which one of those values really resonates with you? Is it always doing the right thing? Is it having an entrepreneurial mindset or the ability to seek out new opportunities and new solutions? Is it being competitive and playing to win? Is it putting other people's needs above your own needs? Or is it really following the data, follow the evidence, rather than reasoning by anecdote or just kind of thinking, well, my opinion is what matters? Question number five, why are you interested in this role? What makes you suitable for this role? So if you want an in-depth answer and explanation to how to answer this question and a free worksheet, make sure you click the card up in the top right-hand corner. 
So when you're breaking this down, make sure that you have the job description to hand. And the job description that you have, if it's not helpful from AstraZeneca, you can find it from somewhere else. I really like prospects.ac.uk. You wanna first of all explain, what would I do in this job? So day to day, what would I do? And the second thing that you're gonna to wanna to say is, what are the two or three skills that I really need that I can demonstrate based on my experience that would make me really good for this job. Where people tend to go wrong is just they just talk about themselves and that they'd love the job and they're really hard working and they'd, they'd love to have an opportunity. Um, not only is this slightly desperate behavior, but also it doesn't really satisfy what the employer is looking for, which is, do you even know what job that you've applied for? Question number six, what are your career goals? This is a very similar question to where do you see yourself in five years? Certainly for the sciences, I know that a lot of the candidates that we deal with will have a very clear goal of what they want to do, whether that would be in, in drug design or in research or working in a lab. But you kind of want to think to yourself, well, where do I want to be in five years? Do I want to be leading a team? Do I want to be working in a different department? Do I want to be working overseas? But the bottom line for this answer is really like, I want to be here working at AstraZeneca, um, working with a team potentially in a management role. So here are four other questions that we came across which we found quite interesting. Tell me a time when you adapted your learnings to a new problem. I love this and particularly for anywhere where you're dealing with a lot of uh, technical knowledge and as a knowledge worker, somebody who basically needs to ingest information to come up with new ideas. Um, this is a good thing to kind of dissect probably through your academics and just saying, well, we came across a new problem. I might have gone to a lecture or done a project, but I also took it upon myself to go and read some uh, new scientific papers, or I made sure that I went off and did my own research or had multiple sources of information. Question number two, what's your three to five year plan? Very similar to your career goals. Question number three, tell us about a time when you made a mistake. So this is a negative star question, right? So star is situation, task, action, result. So talking about making a mistake, it's something that we've all done. Maybe you made a mistake at work, you didn't listen to somebody properly, or you returned a piece of work that wasn't of the correct standard, or you submitted a piece of work late for school. The most important thing to recognize about this is what did you do? So you made the mistake, that's fine. What are the actions that you put into place to make sure that this thing did not happen again? And then the result is, you know, when I had to do that thing again, I didn't make a mistake, I did really well. And question number four, tell us about a time you worked well as a team. So this is a teamwork question. Remember, in STAR, you wanna put the emphasis of your answer, I'd say at least 70% in the action. So what makes a good team player? Well, they communicate, they listen, they do their part, they work hard, they are happy to take on extra work, they check in with other people. It's very easy for you to use Google and to pick up some teamwork skills to really demonstrate an answer. And if you can, take this from work or something outside of studies. Using studies is fine, but remember, when talking about a star, we want to use examples which are as close as possible to the work that we're going to be trying to do. Guys, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, I wish you the best of luck with your AstraZeneca interview. Let us know how we did, what other videos would you like us to make, how did your interview go, what could we do to improve this video, and I will see you next time. See you later.